Every day that goes by is another day that I make a guitar synth, a synthar, if you will, a keytar. Anyways, uh, so this one, I made it with the Logic clavinet, um, and then, so, thing with the guitars is they have this pop in the beginning. So I thought, huh, well, just use a transient booster. So, basically, using this booster with the attack or the saturation or the shape, it messes with that starting point, um, you know, where it's very important to have that loud pop. Because that's like the critical part of how the guitar, you know, is able to create this percussive tonality with the, um, with the other additional processing that goes on later through the uh, guitar rigs. Um, so anyways, here's the clavinet. Bam. So um, if I adjust either of these, I have them in this sequence here. I tried messing with convolution too, and that creates a cool like uh, ethereal sliding guitar effect. Um, so I'll keep that in mind. But anyways, messing with these saturation, the attack, um, and also to some degree the shape. Uh, I basically set these up so that uh, they'd be a little bit of a different vibration, a little bit of a different attack, and a little bit of a different transient happening as I perform because this thing kind of engages at different points so if I just press the key you can kind of hear the attack is changing um, though I haven't done anything here now here's what's really interesting messing with these two or these two um, it gives this effect of messing with the pickup so I, it's kind of difficult to do it uh, without with with one hand, but basically, I'm gonna do this. So you can see a kind of change there. The saturation really adds a body, but also how you play. Like if the notes are a little legato this transient system is going to engage differently. So, wow, what a cool little effect. Very, very close to uh, that, that guitar tone. Also, I'm making the basic, like, kind of uh, crunch sound with this uh, M Guitar Architect. So uh, that's the only effect that I have that's in the post-effect chain. And <clears throat> so, you know, you can hear kind of, here's, here it is with the Houston. But if we go... because we haven't driven it. I had to dial back on the input here because um, it can get quite distorted. Let's go. And that's what the gain almost at nothing. And then we could drive the input as well. I have it kind of low because uh, uh, I don't want to blow out my system here. But and that's just a little stomp pedal. Let's see what else we can get here. More traditional Marshall. Wow. So let's do a double stop. And you could hear there was a little pickup um, effect going on too. So that's a Marshall, and Marshall's rock, that's for sure. So anyways, uh, again, we can mess with all this stuff. You have basically, and, oh, so that's when I deselect the, uh, the sustain pedal.
All right, that's really cool. Unfortunately, it does not have a vibrato, but I've, I do have several effects that can create a vibrato, <laughs> of course. So anyways, these are just some fun examples uh, that you can mess with to create a, a guitar-like effect that actually has um, guitar-like you know, quality more so than just if you recorded a guitar and tried to play it through your uh, synthesizer. Basically, that doesn't ever work. <laughs> Now they have very sophisticated uh, guitar instruments out there that work really well and they probably have done something kind of similar to this and recording many 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 uh, you know uh, samples for each note but anyways this is just a quick way to turn the Logic Clavinet and uh, to experiment with many different things. They, they have a way to change this fret position here and so they also have all these things here that can change the tone. All this stuff here can change the tone. We got a pickup selector that can change the tone. We got all this, I mean it just goes on and on. And I haven't actually started using any effects. I just was messing with an amp. So imagine the possibilities.